To do with your channeling, why are there different messages come from different channelers? Like yours is all positive and saying certain things, then there's other channelers that give very negative messages. Well, your question comes at a perfect time after we've been describing these points of attraction. In other words, Esther is tuned to that which we are, and we know about well being. Some of the others perhaps may not be on the same wheel. The channeler, the person, or the energy that they're channeling? Well, the thing that's most important to understand is that everything is vibrational, and the vibrational frequencies transcend all dimensions. And so, when someone has been physically focused, and they re-emerge into non-physical. The pure positive energy part of you is what re-emerges. And anything other than that is left behind, left along your physical trail. So as you begin translating vibration, it's a little bit disconcerting. Esther remembers in the beginning, not having any real way to understand from what platform we were broadcasting. Who are you? We couldn't explain it to her. Where do you live? We couldn't explain that either. We said to her, you're going to have to evaluate that which we are by the resonance that you feel and by the results of your association with that vibration. It's the only way you know. So we want to emphatically say to you that anyone who has tapped into source energy is delivering to you a message of well being because that's what source energy knows you see it is only in your physical form that you pinch yourself off from the well-being and begin to describe from your perspective of things not the same so every thought that you think is vibrational and every thought that's ever been thought is still vibrating out there somewhere and so wherever you tune your frequency you have access to those rivers and streams of thoughts Sometimes a person, a very well-meaning person, will tap into a stream and they will be certain that it's not them because it's not things that they knew. It's powerful, it's stronger, it's dynamic, it's forceful, it's flowing with enough momentum that they feel the power of what they're receiving. But the question is, is it momentum that's been gathered in these rivers and streams from the spin-off of man's concern? So you just have to evaluate for yourself. And what we are always asking of you is that you feel for the resonance of your own source. The most frequent comment that Jerry and Esther have received from those like you who've been listening to Abraham over the years is it feels like what I've always known. It feels like returning home to who I really am, you see. And of course, it's all about vibrational frequency, isn't it? In the early days, Esther was annoyed with this subject. Abraham, why can't you guys get your story straight? She would say. It would make it ever so much easier if everyone were explaining the same thing. Why aren't you all giving us the same answers? And we said, because you are not all asking the same questions. And you are not in a place of receiving the answers that we are giving you without some understanding of vibration. You have to prepare yourself for the receiving of the pure positive energy that is you, you see. You can't just turn on your transmitter and begin transmitting. It takes some practice, that's all. Esther meditated for nine months and began receiving us during that part. And we are not for a moment suggesting that everyone does not have access to that which we are. You do. We're just saying, if you're getting something that doesn't feel good, it's not us. <laughs> and it's not source. And it's not well-being and it's not who you are and it's not the heart of that which you are it's the spin-off of man's worrisome thought that you've picked up along your physical trail you see okay so it's, it's an energy but it's not source energy. because everything is well we're nitpicking over words aren't we because there's a source of it it's just not the source in other words we'd like to explain to you that there's not a source of evil or a source of darkness you don't walk into a room and look for a dark switch you don't expect to flip a switch and put inky misty darkness to cover up the light. You know that you can resist the light, but the source is that of light, you see. And so the same is true of what man wants to call devil. He's just pinched himself off from the light. And then as he stands in the darkness, he's certain that he wouldn't have done it to himself. 
So he assigns a personality to it and gives it a placement somewhere, but is all that which he is conjuring in order to justify the perspective that he holds. And we certainly understand how when you're standing in a place where things aren't working out that well for you, you don't want some bright, shiny ghost saying to you, you create your own reality, you know. <laughs> but you do, you do. On one of your tapes, you talk about... Um... You've been around a long time. <laughs> um, Listen to you on the eight track, Abraham. Well, I call it a tape, it was a DVD, a USB. Uh, something yet to be invented. Um, you talk about um, this lady who um, has a friend who complains about everything, blah, 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 but she said, you say something along the lines, but she's healthier than me and she's always complaining and. Uh, yeah, she's always saying negative things. And you said you can't judge somebody from where you are. That's the most important uh, thing you to understand. On that? Your perspective is uniquely your own. And your perspective of others is magnificently skewed at best. <laughs> at best. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes and we were looking at others in a comparative way, we would be looking for evidence of the well-being that they are spewing and using them as our reason to activate that well-being in ourselves. In other words, the comparison that puts you down, the comparison that says you are succeeding while I am not is a practiced vibration that will keep you from the success that you want. So the most recent process that we've been offering is to go general. So let's say that you were in a situation where you were watching someone else living abundance and a wonderful life and they were living things that you wanted while you weren't living them and you were feeling that jealousy, that envy or that frustration, that anger, that fear, that worry. Or that sympathy if you feel they're doing worse or something. So you're feeling an emotion that lets you know that you're not up to speed with your desire. So. The more you focus with more detail into the experience, the worse you're going to feel because the momentum is going to take you into a faster and faster vibration that is in opposition to who you really are and what you want. So if you stop and say, well, I'm just going to go general about this. I'm going to get off the specifics. So you say something like, I don't really know all of the details of this. I don't really know what came before this. I don't really have access to all of that. I think that we all have a basis of well-being and that we are all making our way to it. When you reach for a thought and find one that feels better to you, now the next thought that feels better will be accessible to you and the next and the next. And really, the truth of it is, wherever you stand, no matter where you are on the emotional scale, with feeling really good being at one end and feeling really bad being at the other, wherever you are positioned, it doesn't matter if you are in despair, or if you are in frustration, or if you are in exhilaration, it doesn't matter where you are on this emotional scale. There is always room for you to move in one direction or the other. You can feel a little worse with the next thought you choose or you can feel a little better with the next thought that you choose. Most people don't deliberately choose. Most people are not choosing the thought based upon their caring about where they are on the emotional scale. Most people are giving no consideration to their relationship with their vortex. Most people are not making any effort at all to create a grid or a point of attraction that will allow in for them the things that they've been asking for. Most people are just observing whatever it is that they are observing and you are rather magnificently objective about it, weighing the pros and the cons and the pluses and the minuses. But the result of that is you practice vibrations that are all over the place. So you live life experiences that are all over the place. And then you don't feel that you have any real creative control over your experience because you're not exercising control over the direction of your thought. But you could, if you knew a handful of things, I do create my own reality. I am a vibrational being. I do live in a vibrational universe. The source within me is in a very high flying vibration. Everything that I've asked for is spinning there in my vortex. The source within me has already become it. I I can realize it and actualize it too, but I've got to find a way to stop doing that thing I do that's preventing me from the high vibration. What's that thing? How do I know when I'm doing it? Well, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter when or where it is or who you're doing it with, but the thing that is always consistent is that when you're doing it, you feel less good than when you're not doing it. So, oh, I don't feel so good. What does that mean? That means I have a serious disagreement with the source within me. I hate that guy. 
I hate that guy and he deserves to be hated <laughs> someday I'm gonna write a book about all the reasons that I hate that guy but the reason that I feel that hatred or that discomfort or that fear or that anger or whatever you want to call that discord is because the source within me does not hate that guy surely you haven't heard everything that you need to hear source I'll be glad to fill you in so that you don't make a fool of yourself and love him anyway but when you realize that every discord that you feel is about a vibrational variance and that you have control over closing that gap widening it or closing it then you begin to get a hold of your vibration and you begin practicing it into better and better feeling places and then law of attraction gives you better and better results to your better and better vibration until you're moving on the emotional scale from feeling really wonderful to feeling content but you're not dipping into those other emotions so much of the time you see so say for instance with your children and then you, you feel your guilt for what you've done or not done to help them in their life is there anything you really did to help or not help them that you should feel guilty about well you tell us <laughs> well, I, I certainly do yeah. from non-physical perspective you provided an avenue for them into physical experience and once they got here their response to life is their response to life and parents so much want to feather their nest and we want so much for you to not feather their nest we want you to do your best to come into alignment and then present to your children no matter when you figure it out an example of alignment wouldn't it be wonderful if you could present to your children a stable being someone who has discovered freedom the only freedom that exists is the freedom of finding alignment and connection to that powerful source energy the leverage that creates worlds is flowing through your fingertips clear-minded and excited about life isn't that the example that you want to show to your children yes. yeah. someone who's tuned in and tapped in and turned on and can you in this moment in this powerful now when you meet you or you don't in this powerful now where all of your power is do you want to activate some negative memory and bring yourself to a place of regret so that you're presenting to your children right now someone disconnected from source who adores you and who adores them you see once you accept that it doesn't matter what has happened it doesn't matter where you've been it doesn't matter what's been said it only matters what you're offering vibrationally right here and now you could have had a real roof with somebody somebody who you've been arguing with for years and you could stand in your powerful now in alignment with who you are holding them as your object of attention it'll take some work too because when you get tuned into who you really are and then you bring a renegade into your consciousness you come right back out of your vortex in other words you can't maintain the frequency of your source and be mad and remember those old things at the same time so now you're making choices do I want to keep active within me the things that keep me separated from who I really am or I do I want to practice myself into alignment with all that I am and then from that standpoint hold you now as my object of attention so you get tuned in you practice the thoughts you go general 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 you focus on other things you get feeling better 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 you feel really good and then you think of them and it all goes away because that vibration has a lot of momentum to it it was a really big thing you felt bad they felt bad but you don't want to be disconnected from source and now you've got two choices you can never think about them again and maintain your high frequency or you can maintain your high frequency while you think about them well with some people maybe it's easier to never think of them again but we don't know any of you who have ever been able to not ever think of them again because something always happens you hear music something happens you smell food they show up at your house things happen that make you think about them and so if you've trained your vibration up 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 into alignment with who you are oh now you're free now you're free from the bondage of other people out there behaving in ways that take you out of your alignment that's why you're so mad at all of them anyway if you would just behave the way I need you to I could just observe you and in my observation I'd be tuned into source energy and I'd be really happy but no you won't not you <laughs> so what you come to understand is the way you feel is completely about your choice your choice your choice and if you don't believe us it's only because you haven't practiced it because when you start practicing it the evidence will surround you with such emphasis 
that you will never again wonder your power.